Right, everyone, it's um, three minutes past one. Um, we're going to get going now. Welcome to this um, PLCA webinar from the PLCA COVID-19 um, Task Force. Um, I'm Tony Langham. I'm going to be your host um, for this one hour. Um, we're going to start now. This one hour is going to split into three parts. Um, I'm going to present um, the findings from the report, which has drawn you here for 20 minutes. We're then going to have 20 minutes panel discussion with this fantastic panel who will I will introduce when we start that in 20 minutes time. We're going to have that and we'll finish with 20 minutes questions from you, the audience, or we might start that earlier if we get lots of, of questions um, and we will all be done in an hour's time, um, two o'clock UK time. Um, I'm going to have my always nerve wracking moment in these when I say share screen and hope that it works because I'm going to talk in the first 20 minutes to slides. So our subject today is how will PR recover fast in 2021 from this pandemic and that's something obviously that all of us want to see. Um, I will give you a little bit of context and I said this would happen when I rehearsed this earlier my screen froze and then when I did it with the panel before it didn't freeze and now it's freezing again. Um, the background is that um, we set up um, at the, in April this year, um, we set up a global um, COVID-19 task force to help senior communications um, professionals and leaders throughout the world. Um, we had 115 amazing volunteers and thank you to everyone that volunteered um, to be part of that. Um, had a fantastic agile steering group, was a really great um, group of people. Um, and we helped 40 companies with a free advice service. Um, we held um, nine webinars, which 1500 people um, attended. And we had three insight projects of which this is one. Um, and my slides not going. So I'm going to stop sharing and share again in the hope that that works. Um, and because it's quite difficult for me to talk through. Um, let's just try, let's try a different one, let's see. If that works, ah, there we go. Second time lucky. Um, that's the background. This is one of those three insight projects that came out of the task force. Um, and it's really straightforward in inception, um, how to recover fast from the pandemic. We just crowdsourced and thank you for those of you that contributed. Give us your best advice, how to recover quickly. We got 74 contributions from around the world. It makes 75 if you include mine, which is the number that we've been using to promote this. And we published the report um, this week. And what I'm gonna to present to you now is I've taken that report and tried to turn this into an agenda for an agency away day or a communications function offsite in the headings that you might use if you want to talk about 2021, the future. And I will race through them, just giving you all the different thoughts that came through the report. I can't do justice to all 18,000 words and all 75 contributions, and I'd love it if you read them all, but this could give you an agenda for, for, for which to use in that offsite. And then we'll go to four of the panelists after this who will contribute to the report and we'll take a discussion on from there. I've divided this offsite into four sessions, four sections. First, the big picture. Um, there are four major global issues now. We had combating inequality and we had climate crisis. We now have economic recovery and for the rest of our lives we have, I suspect, public health, as Daniel Tish of Argyle in Canada pointed out. A word we might get used to, coined in South Korea, and, and Yoon Hee Choi um, from Philips South Korea pointed that out to us, um, is untacked. It's a more virtual world now, but it's a more virtual world um, forever. And that's something that's going to change so much of what we all do and what people around us do. We must embrace contradiction and change. The new normal won't be as comfortable as the normal before, says Svetlana of the IPRA in Austria. And Mary Beth West, um, who's on this panel from Fletcher Marketing in New York, says we must become change enthusiasts. The brilliant thing about finding solace in, in competitors, collaborators, rivals, friends across the world in this industry is that we're such a positive industry and we see this often as a once in a generation opportunity. David Gallagher from Omnicom PR Group who's on the panel says whatever you were before will be different 
Neil Green over in New Zealand says, don't get sucked into the doomsday economic scenarios. Get rid of the past, says Uwe of Klenkenhorsch. And PR has never been more relevant, says Kiri Sinclair in Hong Kong. In this big picture phase, it's right that there's the right time to do the right thing. ESG is the top of the corporate agenda, says Stephen Waddington. Um, we must share concrete evidence um, where this approach delivers to the bottom line, says my colleague Adam Baines. And the pandemic has unearthed action in individuals that as the like of which we've never seen before, says Nick Williams in BCW. The last big picture part that I drew out for this offsite is that we've seen how communication has saved lives and cost lives during this pandemic. What we all do matters. And we should remember to be confident and be more confident than maybe we have been as an industry, as a job, as a profession over many years. Let's keep our seat at the top table, says Joe Carr of Hope and Glory. Communication can also support employees and help change behaviour, says Amanda Coleman. And we can be reputation guardians, says Sarah Waddington. So if the first part of our offsite is the big picture, the second part is how we approach the future. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to give you the headings that came out of the reports, quoting individuals, move quickly on and leave you to have those longer discussions in your teams. How should we face the future? With humanity, empathy, reassure, listen. Communicate with emotion, compassion and facts, says Edelman's Hugh Taggart. We're best placed to help organisations reclaim their humanity, says Barbara Phillips of the PLCA's Read Board. Um, and we must put ourselves in a client's shoes, says Ang Harrod. It's the time to be brave, bold, confident, creative. Across the EMEA region, Jim Donaldson's Fleischman, uh, Fleischman Hillard's Jim Donaldson says, it's time for creativity and PR to take front and centre stage. Um, Harry Foster of RepTrack supports the, the move and something that sends a shiver down my spine, I don't know about yours, um, Shweta Kolkani von Beeson of the Interactive Software Federation of Europe says, we should be brave enough to engage in tactics that almost get us fired. I hope the emphasis is on the the almost. One thing that so many people mentioned and talked about was it's a time to collaborate, work together, co-create, as Fabio um, from Milan mentions. And a spirit of test, fail, try, new, agile is something that Maria Chong, who was on the steering group um, for the task force, says we need a growth mindset. Planning should happen more frequently in shorter bursts, says Charlotte Stoll. And we should give employees the freedom to experiment and the space to share their wins, says Anna Neves of Noman. It's a time to show up, defend the truth, integrity, said some people. To Natalia Popovich of One Philosophy in the Ukraine, said we need to set a higher bar for our profession. Emily Dickinson of Opinion Research says transparency is not always comfortable, but we need it. Um, a knitting mantra of Avian Wagoner Edstrom and also Eco says traditional media helps us defend the truth and the people who tell it and we owe a lot to them. And I think to complete this section, and I'm conscious that I'm racing through all of these ideas quickly that have come out of this report now, we need to find moments of calm. It's part of being, um, it's part of succeeding, says Paul Williamson. We need to breathe and see things in the long run, says Gustavo Averbudge of Ketchum in South America. And home or separate space is becoming more important than ever before, says Yoon Hee Choi of Philips in South Korea. On this offsite that we're that we're living together today, our section three is advice. And I do hope um, you will find time to, to look at all of these 75 contributions that I am skipping through now must include authenticity, purpose and values. A uniform narrative is necessary to convey the why, says Erzkanap of Fauna in Zurich. Um, the PRCA's Francis Ingham, who's had a fantastic um, um, performance himself during COVID-19 as Director General, advise our clients and businesses to always be generous and do the right thing, regardless of short-term discomfort. And we need to be very clear on what we stand for, our very purpose, says Simon Whitehead of Hill and Alton Strategies. Internal is the new external. Um, Susanna Gill of UK Tote Group talks about how her role has changed. Rachel Roberts says teams with strong cultures outperform. And Danny Cox of Hargreaves Lansdowne says internal comms has rarely had a seat at the top table. But the real opportunity now is to elevate its importance for longer. 
We've spent a lot in our industry and, and quite rightly talking about uh, the Marcom side, I think, and, and the understanding of digital marketing. But for a while, at least, the primacy of corporate PR is back. Issues, crisis, risk management, reputation. Um, Gordon Tempest, of course, a blue Rubicon Teneo fame says, we must make ourselves the couldn't do without partner. Francis Ingham says reputational risk may rise as society focuses on ethics. Lisa George says how it's taught us the importance um, of having policies in place. And my colleague, Laura Hastings at Lanson says, reputation is a major business asset. We've also talked a lot about integration for many years, but people are still mentioning that as something we should aspire to as an industry. Louisa Hoocher and Jason Nisse both mentioned that. And Jeff Altide of PROI Worldwide says, Integrated marketing programs that drive sales will be a priority for companies striving to make up for lost business. Leadership communications. We need the right kind of leadership. Adam Powell talks about the role and Robin de Villiers of BCW in South Africa says CEOs need to be visible, in touch and brave. Shi Wei Ang of Clarico in Singapore, who's, who's on the panel and we'll be discussing things later, talks about the, even in this, untacked and more distant world how in relationships matter and that how that can relate to um, retainer relationships for consultancies clearly we should spend a lot of time talking about data um steve earl of bolt says what we what we need data for is to give us one picture of truth across all of those insights and nuria villanova who's built a tree via across spain portugal and into south america says we can't create strategic communication campaigns without having data analytics Time for full stack content, more visual virtual events. So Susie Bell of Honor in Australia points to that as Simon Corbett of Jargon PR talks about how the demand for digital has been increased. And then to complete this third session of the offsite, um, agency Dr. Richard Houghton says, follow the money, be willing to be judged on results. Bottom line ROI. Kevin Sodi of Keck CNC says, advice needs to be directed to outcomes and the needs, these need to be measurable. So that's the third of our off-site away day sections. I move on to the fourth now, and that's um, what, what might we have on our list for if we're managing communications agencies or functions in organizations. And all of these slides are available clearly. A click, if you go into the um, PRCA, um, how to recover fast from pandemic report, um, you will see in the, in, in the um, summary overview, a click into these slides and feel free to use them. And we've tried to, we've tried to use this project to create a, a, a help to our global industry in discussing the future. So what's under the heading of section four? Prioritize focus and make decisions. Um, Bess Winston of the Winston Agency, who was also on the steering group um, of, of the task force, and winners will 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 be those that leaned into their core competencies. Mike Robb says it's time for a complete rethink of the agency model. And Guy Woodcock talks about unity of effort and unity of purpose being key. Not always our strength in this industry. We need to improve our plans and processes. And Alex Malouf of Schneider Electric in the UAE says, we have an opportunity to rethink how communication is done. At all of our hearts, people are everything, culture matters. And Mark Pogachevsky of NPRM on the West Coast of America talks about the need for connection greater than ever before. Neil Hedges of Headland says, the real winners will be those agencies that have sustained their culture through thick and thin. Great essay from Corinne um, of Midas PR in Thailand. Um, give out more stuff for free. It's good for everyone, makes everyone feel better and helps us all progress. And uh, there's so many different points of view. I can't stress too much um, in these 75 essays, which I'm just skipping over here. And Rod Street of Great British Racing says, we reminded every person in the company that they were talented and valued. And as it turns out, they paid us back by being incredibly adaptable. Time to talk about new technologies, digital innovation, AI, automation investment. Ruxina of Midas again in Thailand says, using customer journey technology rooted in big data is one example. Industry needs to be full stack content marketing and open up clear ROI driven models, says Amandal of Policy Bazaar. That's one of the, the large marketplace businesses of, of India and Asia. Something that's been so close to many of us this year we need to tackle inequality promote diversity and inclusion and on dean whittington of golin talks about how we must ensure our agencies are reflective of the society that we live in 
Madame Bahal of, 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 of giant um, Indian uh, company Ad Factors, who's also on our panel, um, says young leaders can drive important change management programs. So release our young leaders. And to finish um, um, the four sections, what is the office for? So many of us are asking the future of free, uh, freelance is futures freelance, says Nigel Sarbutz. We need a cultural rejuvenation, says Ong Hong Chuan. Um, and Nam Williams of Four Communications says the office is certainly not for sitting at a desk five days a week anymore. So that is, they're the, the four sections for our offsite. My, uh, sorry, I've got one more, one more, one step ahead of myself. And David, again, um, who's on the panel, as I said, um, takes a sobering, a sobering reminder that if investing in growth is too abstract for you, focus on your cash on hand and inflow. That concludes the four sections. My contribution was to say, well, let's make sure we make the right decisions if this is a time to make decisions. Um, and if we're going to make decisions, well, the first thing is to recognize this unique moment, I believe. Um, to paraphrase um, Lenin, um, as you do, um, sometimes decades take, of change take decades to happen, but sometimes decades of change happen in weeks. And this is probably one of those times when decades of change can happen in weeks. So for us, for our organizations, for our clients, um, this could be this is certainly time for strategic review it's certainly time to think about doing things better and it's certainly time for standing back even it, though we're all so busy um, it's certainly time for standing back and reviewing and if we're going to make big decisions and recognize the moment I think we must collaborate internally with senior colleagues it's not a time for individuals taking solo decisions in a room and we should believe in this. It's a time to take external advice because that's what we expect our clients and organizations to do. And it's something we should do ourselves. If we're going to go on a change journey, we know we have to take our people with us. And it's fundamental that we do that as well and practice what we preach to our clients so often. And if we're going to do that, as we've seen from governments around the world, you have to send the right signals in all the decisions you take if you're traveling on a journey. And particularly our government in the UK has sent so many wrong signals during this pandemic for the journey that it's hoping people to go. On. It should be a lesson to us all. So that was my contribution as one of the 75 um, to what the amazing things that everyone else has said. Um, I'm just going to close this rapid summary and to say all these slides are available by the PRCA report. Please use them in your companies um, and consultancies. Um, but I'll leave you with four comments for this section of today. Um, Purpose-led thinking and quick innovation are the critical things, says Amy Binder of RF Binder in the United States. Uwe of Klenk and Horsch in Germany says the companies that can invest in technology and manage culture change will be the winners. My favorite academic who writes on the subject, fourth edition of his great book, Reputation Management, out this year, Professor John Dawley of Elon University in, in North Carolina says, it's one of the greatest opportunities of all time for communications, so don't mess it up. And Richard Sang runs the wonderful business SPRG out of Hong Kong says, and it's a great place to stop. In this bold new world, there still remain endless possibilities. So to discuss those endless possibilities, um, I will stop sharing my screen. Um, I will now introduce our fantastic um, panel to you in the order in which um, they're, they're going to um, start this discussion. Um, Shi Wei Ang is here. She's the um, co-founder and chief executive of Clarico in Singapore. Hi, Shi Wei. Um, Hi, I guess good evening to you. I guess. Um, Hi, thank Tony. you. It's great to be here. <laughs> Yeah, and thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. She will be followed by um, David Gallagher, um, European EMEA PR head uh, of Omnicom PR, uh, head of Omnicom PR. So hello, David, and happy lunch hour to you. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mary Beth West, where it's morning over in the United States, of, um, who's a senior strategist with um, Fletcher Marketing. So great to have you here, Mary Beth. Hello, good morning. Um, good day. <laughs> Yes, uh, and all the above. Um, and Madam Bahal, who's the founder and managing director of AdFactors, India's largest PR agency. It's fantastic, uh, Madam, to have you um, with us um, for, what, for what is the evening to you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Yeah. Pleasure. And of course, um, none of this would have been possible, I should say, without um, my own colleague, Emma Reed in Lansons, who's helped me crowdsource all of these things, but also Corey um, of the PRCA, whose who's marketing communications PR assistance has been invaluable. So it's a delight to have you um, with us as well, Corey, on the call.
Thanks very much, Tony. Thank you. So, as I say, the next part of this is um, we, I will ask um, questions uh, of each of the panel um, and then we will move to your questions as the audience. Please use the um, Q&A um, uh, button at the bottom. It's, in mine, it's at the bottom of the screen. I guess in yours it might be at the top, but please ask questions whenever you want to and I will try and go through the questions and put the key ones um, that, that, that I see to this panel. But we're going to start with you, um, Shi, Shi Wei, and I think you, you say with prescience in your essay, because you probably wrote it a little while ago, that, that this COVID is yes. going to be with us for longer than we think. I, uh, had, which to I, think... Read it. I had to reread it, I must say, Tony, <laughs> I confess. But in this world where it's with us for longer than we thought, if we're looking to, to planning ahead for 2021, um, what things do you think that we should, we should have in mind and, and consultancies and organisations should have in mind in looking ahead? Yeah, I think uh, the first things first, uh, thanks a lot again for having me on the panel. When I articulated that and I said COVID is going to be long term, I think the reality is um, this will not be the last pandemic we'll see. Um, it is a sign of our times. And I, what I really wanted that parties would reflect on was this aspect of it's not enough to say, have you pivoted? You know, that's very one dimensional. OK, fine, we got out of COVID or our, our companies have adapted. I think what I really wanted the focus to be on is if this is a sign of our times, if we will not have just one pandemic in our lives, then what kind of adapting do we need? It is not just a one dimensional pivot, but is this aspect of being more nimble, more agile and, and, and looking at our processes looking at our culture, looking at our mindset of our people and seeing whether they can take that constant change and when they can take that constant um, evolution to keep doing better, to keep adapting to the times. And I think that's a sign of what 2021 will be like. We are talking to a lot of our clients and uh, in fact, I'm giving a workshop tomorrow and the focus of this workshop is really where the client, it's a, it's a big German uh, multinational company. I'm talking to all the Asia leadership there. And they are asking me, should we tell us what COVID has been like in terms of communications for companies? And what are the lessons we can learn? And how do we have to adapt? And I think that's a, it's an amazing mindset of a company to be able to say, we are ready for change. We are ready to adapt. And we want to be reflective at this juncture so that in 2021, we're going to be nimble. And no matter what presents before us, we are going to be ready. And I think that mindset is amazing. That is one of the, uh, the big benefits of what COVID has brought all of us, that adaptability and that ever-changing willingness to uh, pivot. Brilliant. Thank you. I completely agree in so much in, in what you've just said that, that we could pick up on. But I'm going to go straight to, to David. Um, and you said that whatever you were in business before will be different. And what we need is a renewed statement of purpose. So what advice do you have for us, I guess, either in our own organizations ourselves or with our clients for developing purpose? And I saw you you flagged on Twitter that you were going to talk about this, so we, it's not a surprise. <laughs> well, to, it, maybe it shouldn't be a surprise, and I'll, and I'll tell you why in a moment. But first, I, I just want to say thank you, uh, Tony, for your your leadership, both on the task force and pulling this report uh, together. It's, it's a reflection of you know, how much respect people have for you and, and, and your network and your ability to inspire people. But it's, you know, what a, what a great act of, of generosity and uh, graciousness on your part. So I just want to say personally, thank you. And thank you to Corey and the, and the PRCA team. It was really, you know, fun to read. And, and in fact, the, the report, I think some people have said this in the, in the chat, um, you know, it's good advice anytime. I would have liked to have read some of these comments at different points in my career before I'd ever heard of uh, COVID-19. There's just a lot of good, solid agency or communications function management uh, advice there. Um, it, I, I mentioned it shouldn't be a surprise that I talked about purpose because some of you know that uh, I spent most of the first lockdown in London, at least my free time, uh, working on a book about purpose and communications. I'm, I'm writing with uh, an Omnicom colleague named John O'Brien. So I've spoken to a lot of you on this on this call and, and, and panel, uh, and to some of our clients, some of your clients, business leaders, political leaders, and I'm convinced now more than ever, um, and by the way, I started this book before we knew about the pandemic, uh, but I'm convinced now more than ever that having a real clear sense of who you are and why you're in business, why you do what you do, the purpose you serve, 
is probably the single greatest asset you can nurture, to develop, and cultivate to get you through good times uh, and bad. You, you need to have those types of bearings to help you make good decisions. I know that you're on the uh, you know on, on on the right track. Uh, so as I read through the report, and I saw a number of other people that I know and respect, and I was kind of relieved that I wasn't the only one thinking about purpose. Uh, in fact, many of them said it much better than I did. Uh, but I think there was a lot we could we could be inspired by. Um, you know, in our consultancies or within our teams, I've always admired uh, some of the independent agencies, the startup agencies or more established agencies, your own included. Uh, Tony, I think about people like Rob Brown at Don't Cry Wolf or Julietta Dexter at the Communication Store. Their businesses have always always been guided by a very clear sense of, of, of purpose and, and, and what they do. Um, I've heard people from bigger consultancies say that it's not as easy because they don't necessarily own it or control uh, the, what, what the shareholders want. But, but I see people at, at my old agency uh, catch them like Joanne Robertson, who's really built a very clear sense of who they are and why the work that they do matters. So I think we can all do it. It's just we got to ask ourselves some, some hard questions. I think the other thing I took some inspiration from as it relates to purpose is the power of collaboration. And several people mentioned that in, in the report. Uh, the report itself is a, uh, you know, an enormous demonstration of, of collaborative uh, firepower and, and output. And I really hope that we use literally the same format and mechanism to address some of the other lingering ongoing challenges pre-COVID and post for, for our business. And just uh, on a personal note, and I'll, I'll close there, I, I did mention that I think we, we will all go through this experience and emerge something different. Um, I gave a talk at the very beginning. I think it was one of my very first uh, Zoom presentations. Um, uh, and I quoted uh, Arunhati Roy, uh, who had just written something in the Financial Times about looking at the pandemic as a portal and making a conscious decision about the things you want to leave behind and the things you want to invent uh, anew. And I've been at times painfully reminded of my own limitations. So I'm personally determined that I'm going to go through this with a greater sense of, of humility, uh, of listening. I think one of the other phrases that came up a lot in the report and, and empathy and compassion uh, for, for others. I think if this, if this period has shown us anything, it's that it's impossible to predict the future with any real uh, great certainty. Uh, I think it's even harder to control the, the future, uh, but you can control the way you react to it and the way you hopefully inspire other people uh, to bring out their best. So that's personally what I'm what I'm aiming for. Uh, I'll, I'll yield to uh, the, the next question, but uh, but hopefully we can pick up on some of these themes in the in the Q and A. Yeah. Thanks again. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure. Thank you for kind words, David. And also, thank you for your support of the PRCA because because we do need organisations in, in in like the PRCA to, to have a proper profession and and industry. And Mary Beth, I'm going to come to you next. And good morning, of course, I guess. And Mary Beth, you were on the on the COVID nineteen task force we, we steering group. We met we met once a week. So thank you for for that. And you wrote that. We must all become change enthusiasts and love change. Now it's not always a human instinct to love change. So how do we how do we, how do we do that? And how do we how do we take our colleagues with us in this enthusiasm for change? Well, thank you, Tony, and uh, again, thank you for your leadership on this entire project. And also, a, a quick congratulations too on being named a fellow as well for the PRCA. So I had to get that in. Um, also, uh, yeah, I just think that this whole essay compilation project that um, you led for us and that so many, you know, obviously who are on this on this call this morning and uh, whose essays and thoughts are reflective and, and reflected in what you just went through, um, you know, this is indicative of change enthusiasm. I think that we already have this within our industry. I saw a comment pop up just a moment ago while you were going through some of the slides. Um, one of the participants this morning, um, I think very astutely observed, isn't this what we do anyway? Uh, it may have been a comment she was just, uh, just sending to the panelists, but I mean, I agree with that. I think that um, a lot of these aspects of leadership, true public relations leadership and leading from the front in times of great difficulty and uncertainty uh, is something that, uh, you know, I, th I think by and large our industry has always done and has always done very, very well. And, and we've embraced that. Um, I think that in this particular uh, tremendous crisis globally, we've, we've led with um, a commitment to being about change and about leading and about taking definitive action. 
but I think that at this point we have to collectively decide as an industry, we're not only going to continue that charge, we're going to amp up um, those activities and amp up the strategy behind it and the standards as well. I think that crises always present opportunities um, and I, I often say, you know, never let critical opportunities for systemic improvement in an industry or in just the way that you do business uh, pass you by when you're faced with a hideous crisis. Um, about 10 years ago, I lost my company's office in a building fire. And within the next year, because we really tried to focus on some um, aspects of positive change coming out of that crisis, we experienced triple digit business growth. Uh, coming out of a, a crisis like that where we lost, you know, our entire office and, and had such business disruption out of that. Now, that was just a, a, a you know, small crisis in the grand scheme of things that just it impacted us. But when you look at the larger aspect of, of how crises impact businesses individually, if you, if you can look at it through the lens of where are the opportunities for growth and uh, be an enthusiast for the change and be embracing of that change and help to, uh, I guess, be the lantern of opportunity for your clients and help point them in those directions from a, from a posture of opportunity and positive outlook, then that's, that's a positive thing. So I think that just bringing that strategic vision in mind Mindset is very important. Uh, balancing societal good is also a very critical part of that. And the only, the last thing I'll say on this point is just making sure that as we go forward, as we're uh, being enthusiasts for change, keeping ethics on the forefront. Um, I, you know, I, I think that uh, that that's one aspect of what we do in in managing trust and relationships. That if we're continuing to do the right thing and for the right reasons, um, our profession will be embraced and valued all the more. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you, Mary Beth. And, and to everyone, we have three questions already. Um, please use the Q&A um, box if you'd like to, to answer questions. And Madan, I'll, I'll, I'll turn to, to, to you now and you, you great business ad factors in, in India. And, and you wrote many, several things, but the one that I, I chose to pick out because it was different and was you saying it's a time to release our young leaders because so many people have thought this is a time for experience. You wrote it's a time to release our young leaders and Marcel in the Q&A box has asked what can junior communications professionals do during this time to, to contribute? So what did you mean and, and what were you thinking about when you said release our young leaders and how should we, how should we do that? Thank you, Tony. And uh, as all the panelists have complimented you, I also joined them in congratulating you for putting this wonderful effort together. Uh, so the, the, this, uh, in India, we have a saying that you don't, you don't, uh, when you're thirsty, you don't start digging a well. Uh, you plan in advance. Uh, so the change process uh, really started in the earlier major global crisis in inclusion my firm. That was in 2008-9. Uh, we in, in, initiated one exercise called the annual change program and the entire firm comes together and say for the next year ahead, this is the change agenda we have. Now, over the years, as it was progressing from 2009 until about three years ago, every year I was getting more and more frustrated by the desire and the need to change and still finding a lot of resistance to change internally. And I found that most of the resistance came from the senior people who were kind of hardwired in the habits and, uh, and would find it very difficult to just come to terms with anything that was um, shaking them up. And on a long flight from, from US to India on a 16, 15 hour flight, uh, after two or three dings, it occurred that maybe we should shift the focus and not, not worry about these guys who don't want to change, but where the change agility is the highest, where the change elasticity is the highest is at the lower floor. So if you imagine the, the, the PR agency as a 10 floored uh, storied building, you start a massive fire on the ground floor and on the first floor and, and let the heat and the smoke move upwards and, and, and force change upwards too. So this, this as a philosophy then got translated into multiple programs. For example, in 2018, we celebrated the year as a year of the account executive. Now, AdFactors has 300 account executives. 
and the whole year was full of those things uh, i would take them for a movie every quarter as one of the things of course there were a lot of learning and development programs there was a lot of uh, bonding there was a lot of training and and all of that was happening uh, we moved forward we on the 12th of uh, august every year we now have made it compulsory to uh, celebrate it as an internet as an account executives day it is the same day as the international youth day uh, a little later we launched what is called as a decathlon which means the participant account executive or a manager there separate decathlons uh, like the sport decathlon have to do 10 things every month and submit an entry much like a, a prc awards and that's judged by a jury and say all right you did well uh, the decathlon challenges on many fronts including what you do on the client including for example a thing like have you done an act of personal heroism last month did you go to the gym 12 times in a month so that health is emphasized uh, can you pass a test quiz test of a vocabulary of 2000 business words because the vocabulary of public relations is limited to only 50 or 60 words and and that's not the vocabulary that we should be worried about so a lot of what we wanted the firm to be started getting implemented in 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 these programs at a manager level we had another interesting thing where i mean one one belief i have is that the business of management now becomes the business of change management and the business of communication now becomes the business of change communications everything else is less important if that be so how can we train the young people into ch- becoming change managers and change consultants at every level so we launched an internal program which which had some six or seven modules so there was a team of six managers that came together to say we will we will promote diversity in adfactors another group came and said we are going to make adfactors green so what did they do they banned plastic they reduced energy consumption by 10% they put a lot of plants outside our outside our compound there was another one which was about women's empowerment that team of 6 7 account managers and came and said all right uh, the important insecurity in women is in a in a in a in a society like india the husband or the father still does all the financial matters so financial literacy is important from a from a security point of view or empowerment point of view so numerous things of this kind have been happening uh, to to bring that agility change agility at scale at at the bottom level i think the amount of energy they have, that has unleashed in the organization is paying very very rich dividends it's a vibrant culture it's it's resilient it's change agility at scale but i want to mention just one more point that when you deal in an accelerated change change was happening even earlier pandemic merely accelerated the change what is the responsibility with whatever we preach if we want really the stakeholder to be protected the client to be protected and the agency people to be protected where do you start so we started by saying not a single job will be lost come what may throughout the year right in the first week of april 600 out of 800 people won't even have a single salary cut and the 200 people who will have a salary cut will have it only once predictable the moment to bring this kind of certainty then you unleash the power of the entire organization for managing change without that i mean you you cannot army doesn't fight on an empty stomach or with a sense of uncertainty what's happening back home so i think this is the kind of thinking that goes into yeah managing change and dealing with change yeah thank you thank you madan excellent thoughts so i noticed in the chat kate king also says um maybe young people should focus on ai tools to give themselves an advantage as well um and democratizing things will will be useful just looking at the questions thank you madan questions and and comments um we have a question from joe um overty who who and i i think i'll i'll go to i think i'll go to um she way first with this if that's okay that that we've seen what we've seen quite a lot of focus in certainly um in the UK and certainly in the United States on how communication has been used and how communicators have worked um during the pandemic um and it's been a major subject here um has this helped our prof- has this helped us do you think this focus on communicators and communication or and built our reputation or has it harmed us 
Um, Shiwa, I don't know how it seems from where you are. I know, David, I think I might go to you next, but do you think this focus on how our communication has helped us as, a, as an industry? I think absolutely. Um, the focus on the message. In fact, a lot of companies and clients are asking us to relook their narrative. So a big push for us is really being strategic advisors around a company's narrative and seeing how that is relevant today. Uh, the clerical mindset is that we're here to drive a, a social conscious way of communications that is similar to what David is saying, that a company needs to have the purpose, it needs to articulate its values, it needs to articulate what it stands up for, not what it stands, just what it stands for. And I think this um, heightened attention into the message, into what the public is saying about a company has certainly put us in the forefront um, of, of where communications plays an integral role in companies. So I would most certainly agree with Joe on this point. Um, and I do think that this is the moment for us to really get a head start. Uh, as some of the comments you shared uh, mentioned, don't mess this up for the communications industry. We are, being uh, we are advising our clients at a very strategic level with regard to um, maneuvering this crisis Companies are going through a lot of restructuring. They are going through um, upheavals in their business. Some companies need funding. Uh, these are really core uh, uh, issues and challenges that companies are facing. And they're calling upon us as experts in taking them through this moment. And I do think this is where we can really solidify the input and the value add we bring to our clients by being there and showing up and really advising our clients in the right way uh, to get through these difficulties. Thank you. And and David, what what are your thoughts? Because obviously in the UK, we've seen you know we've we've seen regular weekly reports recently, uh, effectively, effectively outing and criticising governments for paying lots of money to communicators. So uh, do you, do you think all this has helped us or harmed us? Well, like most crises, it's probably been a double-edged sword. I, you know, I, I agree with Shiway though. I think that where you see uh, we've seen a number of, of companies and brands and, and some government agencies really um, shine throughout the crisis. And we've seen some, you know, make some pretty regrettable uh, missteps. And, and it's not just the pandemic. It was their response to the, the subsequent social uh, unrest, you know, here in, in the U.S. We saw some respond well and some respond uh, poorly. And I think those of us on the inside, we can kind of see who's gotten good advice and maybe who hasn't. Uh, take, uh, gotten good advice. Uh, I personally think that we have um, an obligation to um, to provide government agencies or, or private businesses with the best advice we can. I don't really have a problem with uh, you know government spending money on that. There's some questions about transparency and, and reporting on that, and that's a, probably a, a second concept. I think what I would maybe would take the conversation slightly differently, though. I, I do see. I think the crisis has shined a light on some problems we have in this business and some of them have gotten worse as a, as a result. Uh, I've written quite a bit about my concerns about misinformation, you know, fake news, conspiracy theory. Uh, all of this, I think, um, you know, was accelerated greatly by the pandemic, by, by the US political uh, environment. And I think that this is something that we can come together on and, and focus. And I even like the, the format you use for the, uh, for the task force and for this report. I wonder if we could come together and talk about what are the real issues as it relates to news information and their reliability, and what is our role uh, as a professional community to make sure that we're uh, bringing people together around facts and, and information, not on conspiracy or conspiracy theory. So agree with Shiwei. I think it's a great opportunity for us. I think it's made us look good in some cases, made us look bad in others, but I think there are other things we can focus on together, and this might be a good format. Mm, no, here, here, here to that. Now, there's been, a, some of you may have seen, there's been a great conversation going on, on in the chat function between two of the people from the task force, Stephen Welsh and Rod Cartwright. And I, I won't summarise, but, but, but Rod talked about um, in, to become strategic advisors, we need a greater sense of, of confidence. But uh, and earlier when you were talking, David, you mentioned the word hu humility. Um, it, it, do, do we have a comment on that? It, it, Mary Beth, do you do you feel that uh, as as a community we need a greater sense of confidence, or do you think we're do you think we're 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 there in the right place? I I, I vary on this. I have to say. Well, um, confidence. Okay, so I, I do think that uh, you know to the earlier comment about you know integrity of 
um, ethics or integrity of information and, and so forth. I mean, I think that we do, as an industry, have to lend voice to the importance of data and factual information and honesty, all, all of those uh, cornerstones of our profession that are so critical in communica honest communications and relationship building and trust building. And uh, in point of fact, for example, uh, and, and I can't speak for other regions of the world and what they are experiencing, but in the US, we have had a major crisis in uh, uh, data um, and especially in the arena of uh, uh, polling data. Um, and you know, I, I won't get into a political conversation, but we've had uh, two rounds now in national uh, political contexts of uh, major national political elections where uh, polling data was off roundly within the industry um, to, well into the double digits. And so this does have implications for the public relations industry because I think a lot of clients are starting to say, is polling data that's relative or relevant to my uh, work as, or my my account in public relations, or the or the work or the advice that's being given to me that's being predicated on research data that's being given to me, is it valid? Um, is uh, polling and is uh, social or social sciences research um, methodology still as relevant today as they were in in previous years? So. Um, you know, I think that we have to lend voice to these types of issues and we have to support the research industry and help to support best practices. And uh, that's just one aspect, I think, of this conversation that, you know, going forward in the, in the year ahead, in order to forge better trust, um, you know, we have to be lending voice to that and being supported. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I just looking through the chat function, there's there's comments that, that um, well, we should be talking more about climate change. And I'm conscious that, you know, we've also had conversations about diversity. Now, Madam, when you were talking about your your year of your years of change, I think you mentioned both um, focus on climate change and diversity. I wonder if I could ask you about to pick one of those, maybe diversity. And because we talk a lot about that in the UK and the United States when what are the diversity issues that, that you focus on and that are important to, to, to you in, in, in your business and how do you see it in, in the society you're part of? I think the issues are different in the socioeconomic context of different societies in different markets. And, and, and while, I mean, I, I was in a recent paid society, Arthur W. Page Society event and just about every single panel focused on racial equality or inequality in that society. And, and Black Lives Matter as words came up in virtually every single conversation. And therefore diversity, equity, and inclusion was a more, more immediate kind of a thing, more than even climate being mentioned there. In India, we don't, we are a very, very culturally diverse market. So that doesn't really become a subject of great conversation. The, the income disparities, I think are an issue. And those are issues on which society has to come together, governments, businesses, institutions have to come together too, and they don't know short-term solutions. How do we do some basic indicators right on health? How do we do basic indicators right on education? Because education is a great empowering thing. Those are long-range solutions. At a more, more immediate level within my business context, I find one thing that I have to resolve, we are making some effort is adequate women leadership. The women percentage in the organization is, is quite okay. It's actually a majority, but the, the, as the pyramid goes up, the, 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 we, we don't have enough women leaders uh, who can take responsibility, but we are greatly inspired by the, by the value that women leaders bring and, and the diversity as it increases year by year, we're finding tremendous amount of benefits of that in terms of making an organization stronger and resilient. So this is what I would say today. Hmm. 
Thank you. And and I'll just ask uh, any of you, does anyone want to pick up the either either in your own organisations or societies or with clients point about combating um, climate crisis? So raise a hand if anyone would like to, to to say anything on that on that subject as it's been chatted through. Not seeing a hand. I will, I I will make a I will make a point. Hmm. I, I was having a conversation only yesterday with the company into thermal power. And I say, I, in India, we, we have a lot of astrology. So I said, I can write a chart for you. What is going to happen in the next five, 10 years? Your stock is going to go down year after year as a clamor against fossil fuels because it's a thermal power kind of an organization. Hmm. It's going to be challenged. Uh, you are going to have pickets outside your factories to say, stop this smoke and smoke this plant. You are going to have policy regulations coming that is going to limit your capability to function. And therefore, what is your change agenda? And how do you want to balance or moderate that debate, if at all? So there, there is a lot of issue around it. Because for, for example, I mean, we are feeling the heat. The Southwest monsoon that serves India and this, this kind of the part of the continent is the most predictable weather system in the world. The rain will come in India on the 7th of June. I, I've known that for since, since I was born. In the last two years, all those patterns have got disturbed for the first time. And uh, therefore, there's a lot of concern and uh, businesses in India are not yet facing the same amount of heat as they may be facing in some other markets, but it's coming. Thank you. Thank you. It's so interesting. We, we could clearly, we could go on all afternoon, but we are actually incredibly, we're at five to, we, we have five minutes left. Now, I'm going to go to each of the, of the panellists. And um, Brenda has said in the chat box, please give me some specifics. So, um, so what I'm going to, to, to charge you with um, is, is a, is a specific, either, either a specific thing that uh, leaders of communication functions or agencies should do differently in 2021 or a, a specific hope for our industry in 2021. Um, and, 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 if we, and if we can do this qu we, we quickly, we have just a minute each. Corey, I'd love it if you don't mind um, giving us a thought as well, because you're a, 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 an expert in this subject too. So if we could all just have sort of just a minute each and I, um, I said I'd go in the reverse order. So, um, but I think you were just talking, Madame. So I won't, I won't go exactly reverse order. So I will, if it's all right, Mary Beth, start with you, Mary Beth, Madame, Shiwei, David, Corey, if that's all right. So, um, Mary Beth, if that's okay, a specific for for Brenda and others for 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 twenty twenty one. Well, um, in terms of improvement or in terms of areas where we could truly focus uh, to lift up the industry and uh, be able to uh, be the best versions of ourselves, I guess you'd say, um, and I hate to sound like a broken record, but I continue coming back to ethics. Um, the Ethics and Compliance Initiative, which is based in Washington, D.C., um, their research has indicated that the more change that an industry or an organization is confronted with, the more risk they undertake with regard to non-compliance and uh, different unethical behaviors that may be assumed by those within the management ranks or even the frontline ranks of the, or of the organization. So I think that um, all of the change that we've seen uh, due to COVID may present a lot of risk downstream for a lot of client organizations and industries for non-compliance and a lot of resulting crises that may happen. And so we have to be on the forefront of that and be the voices of ethics to make sure that trust is assured and reinsured throughout that process. So I hope that we all embrace that. Brilliant. Here, here, here. Thank you, Mary Beth, and thanks for your contribution. Madan, you're, you're specific for, for, for 2021. Be the gold standard in learning and development. Invest, if possible, one-fourth of your profit or two or three percent of your revenue in learning and development. You, you must be able to retain and attract the best resources. That's how you're going to win the war. Second, revamp your leadership 25 to 33 percent every year for the next five years <laughs> because they are simply not good enough. Many of them are not good enough for a new change world order. And I don't think, and if that means sacking yourself, sack yourself. But the client interest and the organizational interest must be served. Be very strict about this. These are the two things. 
Thank you, Madan. Let, let's hope more, more junior people are listening, maybe, than senior people. Um, thank you so much for contribution. Um, Shi Wei, what's your specific? Well, my specific is uh, you had asked us to think about what we would like to see uh, change for our, uh, our industry. I would love for the day that uh, we, um, like lawyers, like auditors, it is unimaginable that a reputational expert is not sitting at the side of a CEO or a chairman of the board. Um, we must become integral in our clients' businesses. That would be my hope. Mm. Yeah, here, here. Thank you. And thank you for contribution. And, and thank you, everybody. David, your well, I, I love what everybody has said. And I want to thank Mary Beth, too, for her leadership on uh, the PRCA yeah. Ethics Council as well. So uh, she beat me to the punch on that, but she's put a lot of energy and passion into it. So she deserves mm -hmm. to have the comment there. Um, the thing that I think has been the most helpful for our businesses in 2020 has been investing in resilience training. Um, both for our leadership and for every member of, uh, of our teams. And um, I was doubtful at first, but I've seen the impact. And I realized that we actually needed this before we were even, even faced with the, the pandemic. So if you're looking for something specific and affordable and doable, I would invest in, in resilience training. Uh, looking ahead, I don't want to get ahead of some of our announcements, but we have made some investments and, and put a lot of effort into uh, technology, particularly into data analytics and AI. So I know Katie King will be, be happy to hear uh, that we've taken her book seriously, and I think that we're going to bring that to uh, to, to bear. Um, and I guess the last thing I would say is, if you're looking for some some optimism, and, and to, to go back to some of the comments about uh, climate change, if if you look where the where the big money is going, if you look where the big investment houses are betting uh, for the recovery and beyond, they're looking at ESG, they're looking at sustainability, and they're looking at at green energy. So this this idea, whether you call it climate change or something else is going to drive us out uh, through recovery and into some, some new, uh, hopefully prosperous future. And I think we as advisors would be wise to really bone up on that and make sure we understand what, we, uh, what we're talking about and help our clients succeed as we move to that kind of new future. Brilliant, I uh, completely agree, David. Thank you so much for that. And, and Corey, um, what, what do you hope for in, in 2020 or a specific from you? I suppose my, my, my favorite detail that kind of emerged from this, this discussion was uh, David's point about uh, having a clear sense of who you are and why you're here and bringing that uh, uh, to the fore and really uh, having that as a kind of a, a distinguishing feature that sets you apart from from your competition I think that's a really powerful idea and the idea of really defining your purpose and building it into every aspect of your organization from recruitment uh, all the way through to, to all areas of business so that that would be the main point for me. Brilliant. Thank you, Corey. And thank you, everyone. We are exactly on time, as, as all, all things should be. Um, so just a massive thanks to me from everyone for listening. But, but also to you, panellists, you've thank you. You all contributed to the report. That's why I, I asked you to be part of this. You've been fantastic today. So thank you, um, Shi Wei, Madan, Mary Beth and David. Just brilliant contributions. You're all fantastic uh, leaders in, in our industry. And, and, um, and let's just be positive about everything. I think we're going to go into a phase where there's going to be a lot of negativity around and I think all bit working together collaborating and spreading positivity is the other thing that we need to bring to the world and um, I hope we've done a little bit of that um, today to everyone that's joined us so thank you panelists thank you people for joining thank you PRCA and see you all soon so thank you